Many Christians claim their freedom in Christ, but deep down, the devil has defeated them. They thought they were free from his attacks, but unknown to them, they were 1,000 miles away from freedom and joy. Why is this so? It is because they don't know the strategies of the enemy. Today, I will share with you seven clear strategies the enemy uses to keep you defeated. You will also learn how to defeat the enemy. You can still fall victim to these seven strategies, even if you've spent donkey years as a Christian. So, please sit back and learn what the enemy has been using against your life and how to escape it. Before we continue, please remember to subscribe to this channel. Jesus has indeed overcome the devil. He came into the world and overcame all evil. Notwithstanding, the devil uses some tricks and strategies to make Christian believe he's still in charge. Whenever he applies any of them, the Christian man forgets his power and dominance. He falls flat on his face and cries like a wounded lion. This ought not to be so. That is why you need to know these strategies. A clear understanding of them will help you defeat the devil. Once you understand his strategies, overcoming him becomes a piece of bread. Now, what are these strategies? Number one, the devil tries to scare you. Fear has been one of the ancient weapons of the enemy. He has used it on several people and got away with it. He employs fear to paralyze their souls and get them to do the wrong thing. Fear is a killer. You shouldn't fall prey to this weapon of the enemy. You have sacrificed your faith when you allow a situation or circumstance to scare you. You've sent God out of the picture. That is how the enemy gains a foothold on you. And the only solution is God's mercy. Peter saw Jesus Christ walking on water. He wanted to know if it was truly Jesus. Therefore, he asked Christ if he could come. Christ told him yes. Peter stepped on the water but didn't sink. His faith in Jesus made him stand. But the Bible recorded that fear gripped him when he became conscious of his environment rather than gazing at Jesus. And immediately, he began to sink. However, Jesus grabbed and saved him from destruction. This could be you in your simple corner. You started with faith, but stopped because of fear. And if I may ask, fear of what? Keep your answers. Whatever has built this fear, you must remember that it is from the pit of hell to keep you defeated. 2 Timothy 1, 7 says, For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. Let the Spirit of God make you strong. Don't give room to fear. Number two, the enemy lies to you. If the devil has any talent, it is telling lies. Jesus said in John 8, 44, that the devil is a liar and the father of all lies. This means he's not just a liar. He builds them. The main point is, how does he utilize this to keep you defeated? He tells you to lie about yourself, your family, God, etc. Have you ever wondered where negative thoughts spring from? They are the lies that the devil wants you to believe about yourself. He might tell you that God will never forgive you of your sins. Your sins are so many, grievous and pathetic. How can you even dream of forgiveness? That is a lie. Once you confess, Jesus, as your Lord, you are free from the control of sin. The devil might make you believe that you are worth nothing. He will keep telling you that your life will be difficult. God doesn't love or care about you. If he does, why are you suffering? You must be wise. This is it. the devil trying to keep you caged in a room of negative thoughts. If you believe these lies, your life will replicate your belief system. And that means the devil has won. Stand your ground and believe the truth today. Don't let the devil defeat you. Number three, 
the enemy tempts you to sin. James 1, 13, 14 says, When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. This Bible verse says that God cannot tempt a man. Instead, what leads to temptation is the evil desire in man. And who is the originator of this desire? It is the devil. He opens your eyes to a carnal desire and makes you sin against God. He knows that once you fall into temptation, your protection weakens. That's because God cannot behold sin. But then there's freedom in Jesus. There is no temptation that is too great for you to overcome. Why? God is right there with you. If you listen to him, he will help you overcome whatever confronts you. The devil will not make you a captive. He tried tempting Jesus. He opened his eyes to the desire to eat after fasting for 40 days and nights. However, Jesus knew his tricks already. Think of what Christianity would look like today if Jesus had turned stone into bread. People would be calling the Son of God a magician. But thanks to God, Jesus was alive to his strategies. He rebuked the devil after his third attempt to tempt him. That is what you should do as well. Live with the consciousness that the devil is trying to destroy you with diverse temptations. However, you can overcome them all Number four, the enemy stirs up pride in you. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs that pride goes before a fall. The devil knows and has experienced this. According to the book of Ezekiel, God created him with all kinds of precious stones. He was the bearer of God's light. He beholds God's glory. This made him think to be like God. This was what God captured as iniquity. God didn't waste a second. He relieved him of his duties in the celestial realm and sent him down to hell. Thus, the devil knows pride can defeat any creature, man or angel. So when God answers your prayers by enlarging your life, the devil teaches you how to elevate yourself. He will keep pumping your shoulders making you believe you are above others. He pushes you to act in inhuman ways to people below your status. He engineers people to sing your praises. This act keeps developing pride in you. But when God sees this, his wrath burns. He hates pride with passion. Thus, he reaches out to such an individual and humbles him or her. A similar thing happened to Nebuchadnezzar. And until the boastful king acknowledged the supremacy of God, he remained a beast. Don't give in to pride. It's a weapon from hell to render you useless before God. Number five, he tries to accuse you, spoiling your reputation and testimony. The Bible calls the devil the accuser of the brethren. He will always dig out things that are ugly about you. He always watches your steps to have something to say to God. He enters into men and they begin to damage your reputation. He might see that a huge opportunity is coming your way in the office. To stop this, he will instigate a conspiracy against you. These people will rise with so much power to keep you down. You can't fathom why they do this. The truth is, they are working under the devil's auspices. Jesus experienced the same. After the high priests had captured him, false witnesses arose and began to say all kinds of lies about Jesus. They were speaking with so much energy that no one could dispute them. This was the devil in action. But despite it all, they didn't kill Jesus' spirit. He kept holding on till his last breath. This is what you should do as well. You must not allow the devil's accusations to move you. Number six, he pushes distractions into your life. Distractions are side attractions on the journey of purpose. You are on a journey to your destiny. However,
the devil does not want you to make it. So, he strategically stations diverse distractions on your way. He knew that if you fell victim, he would defeat you and your purpose. These distractions may be money, positions, or people. It can even be an untimely success. Many believers are not conscious of this. God might be preparing something huge for you, but then the devil will quickly send a fake version to you. If the believer is not sensitive to God's leading, he will see this as an answer to his prayers. Whereas it's only a distraction, the devil derives pleasure in distracting you from all God has prepared for you. You must be conscious of this. Don't allow the devil to distract you from what God has created you to become. Don't let him use wealth, friends, or untimely success to sway you off the righteous path and defeat you. For life. Number seven, he reminds you of your past. The devil knows your past. He knew you once walked in his ways, but immediately you come to Christ, you become his primal enemy. Thus, he will do all he can to ensure you don't stay on the track. And one of the ways he ensures that is by reminding you of your past. He keeps bringing all the horrible things that you've done to your mind. Listen, he aims to make you doubt your salvation. He wants you to see yourself as unworthy of God's grace. If you believe him, you've fallen victim to his traps. You must not let that happen. You must ensure that the devil does not defeat you. Always remember that your past does not define you. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. That is your reality. You are now in Christ. He has collected all your ruins and buried them. They don't live again. They don't matter anymore. You are as new as the day you were physically born. Moreover, the devil may know your past, but not your future. This is even what scares him the most. He is afraid of what God wants to do through you. And that is why he wants to defeat you through your past. Now that you know the devil's strategies, it's not time to cross your hands. You need to know how to defeat him. So how do you ensure his strategies? Do not work on you. First, you must be equipped with God's word. A day should not pass without you reading and carefully studying the Bible. This is your sword against the devil's tactics. When he was tempting Jesus, the Son of God didn't think about what the devil was saying. He didn't look at heaven and tell God to send angels to protect him. Instead, he spoke the word of God. Everything Jesus said in that encounter started with it is written. So, you must prepare yourself by studying God's word. And not only that, you must also speak the word. When fear tries to cripple your heart, Speak God's word against it. When temptations arise, speak God's word. When the devil tries to remind you of your past, declare God's word. That's how you claim your victory. And if he refuses to stop, remind him of his future. How can one who God has already condemned talk about someone else's past? Such a person ought to mourn their fate. Let the devil know that he is a condemned being. Also, you must subdue every thought under Christ. You must not allow the devil's lies to subdue you. When they come as negative thoughts, don't counter them with thoughts. Instead, begin to rebuke them. Subject your mind to Christ at that very moment. Don't let the devil have a place. 2 Corinthians 10, 5 says, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. You must remember to do this every time the devil speaks his lies. Then, never forget to humble yourself 
under the mighty hand of God. Don't give in to pride and ego. Don't see yourself above others. Instead, see others above you. Irrespective of what God gives you, you must humble yourself. You should keep telling yourself that the abundance in your life does not dictate who you are. God has blessed you so that you can bless others. Don't let the devil push you into believing that you are all in all. He wants to only draw you down from getting to the top. You can also defeat the enemy when you focus on your goals. Don't give in to distractions. Don't fall by the wayside of destiny. You make a fool of the devil when you fix your eyes on the goal. You show him his side attractions are not strong enough to stop you from moving forward. And you must not be anxious or worried about any situation. Let it keep ringing in your heart that God will do everything for you. Never forget that he who called you out of darkness into light can solve all kinds of problems. Instead of crying and becoming anxious for nothing, be grateful to God. Yes, there are burdens on your neck. You might be battling a disease, unable to pay your kids' fees, and so on. But the truth is, brooding over them will not bring a solution. Instead, bring them to the burden bearer. Slap the devil on the face by singing praises to God. One thing that you don't know is that genuine worship and praise send the devil out of your life. And as he leaves, all your troubles and anxieties leave with him. When God's children choose praise over their problems, it usually ends with joy and divine victory. The devil tried to kill the faith of Paul and Silas, but instead of questioning God, they praised him. The devil had to leave, and a mighty miracle happened. You must always remember to employ this strategy every day. Then, prayer. Ephesians 6, 12 makes us understand that our struggle is not against flesh and blood. This means our enemies are not humans. They are spirit beings. They are rulers. They are authorities. We are fighting against the powers of this dark world and the spiritual forces of evil. And the only weapon you can use against these forces is praying with understanding and in the spirit. You must keep waging war against the devil's strategies in your life. Yes, Jesus has given you the victory on the cross. However, you can only leverage this victory through prayer. You must establish your dominance over spiritual forces through prayers. Refusal to pray makes you pray. You shouldn't become one. That is why you must commit your life to God now and tell him to give you power over the devil's strategies. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I bless your name for today. Thank you for your priceless words. It has blessed my life beyond measure. Thank you for revealing the strategies of the devil. Now he can't have a hold over my soul again. You have dispelled the power of darkness over my life, family, and endeavor. I will forever praise your name. Lord, please let your mercy speak for me today. I can see that the devil has been afflicting me with some of these strategies. Please let your mercy deliver me today. Grant me total freedom from the devil's tactics. Father, reveal the strategy that the devil wants to use against me in the future and show me the way out. I must not fall into his hands again. I must not become his prey. If he's planning to instill fear in me, I claim my victory. If he wants to spread his lies on my heart, let your truth and light destroy them. Destroy all his plans concerning my life. He must not smile over my soul or that of my loved ones. He must not destroy your works in my life. I pray especially about pride. Lord, keep me humble. I must not boast of anything outside you. I am nothing without you. I don't want to experience what Nebuchadnezzar experienced. 
I bend my knees before you forever. From today, I claim my victory in Christ. Jesus has won the battle against evil forces. Therefore, no evil shall overcome me. The devil can keep roaring like a lion. He is just wasting his time. I have fixed my gaze on Christ. Therefore, I will never fall or stumble. Christ has delivered me from the spiritual wickedness in this world. He has delivered me from every strategy of the enemy. Jesus, keep me in you and you in me. Nothing must separate me from your love. Nothing must pull me away from your presence. And even when there seems no way, I will praise your name. I will sing glorious songs to you because I know you are right by my side. Thank you for the assurance of victory over all wiles of the enemy. Thank you because I know you have heard my supplications. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. Amen. If this video has impacted your life, please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more spiritual revelations. See you in the next video.